Good morning and welcome to everyone who is joining us today for our virtual class on understanding CareLink reports. We're so excited to have you all join us. Our goal here is to provide you with helpful information on interpreting and understanding the CareLink personal software for the Minimed 630G system and the 530G system. Oftentimes, your provider may upload your data from your insulin pump at your clinic visit. But you can also upload your pump at home and review various reports that we'll cover today. These reports can help you better understand your numbers and identify any possible improvements that could be made when managing diabetes. My name is Ashley McIntyre, and I'm a Principal Clinical Territory Manager from Tyler, Texas. I am a registered nurse and a certified diabetes educator, and I've been with Medtronic for 14 years. I will be your presenter today to help guide you through this virtual class and the various CareLink reports. Just a reminder that we will be discussing reports for the Minimed 630G and 530G systems during this live stream. The Minimed 630G system is approved for ages 14 and up and who are living with diabetes when using the Guardian Sensor 3. For those using InLight Sensor, it's approved for ages 16 and up. And for the Minimed 530G, it's approved for the ages of 16 and up living with diabetes. As you can see here, these are the four reports that we will be discussing the sensor and meter overview, the daily detail, the logbook, and the device settings snapshot. To access CareLink personal software from home, please visit carelink.minimed.com. Here is a picture of the sign-in page. If you have not already done so, you can sign up with a free account and you will create a username and password as you can see here. Once you've logged into CareLink and you've uploaded your, uh, your pump, you can click on the reports tab as you can see right here. Once you click on the reports tab, here are some examples of the various reports that you will find. The four highlighted at the bottom are the four we will be taking a closer look at. Once you've selected the Reports tab, select the report you want to review by clicking Add to the List. And then you'll select Generate Reports. Just so you know, you can generate reports by time frame. For example, you can review a report by weeks or by months shown at the top, or you can customize to a specific time frame. The first report we want to take a look at is the Sensor and Meter Overview Report. This report summarizes sensor glucose, carbohydrate, and insulin data, and it provides an overview of your glycemic control during the day, overnight, and at mealtimes. If you do not wear the Continuous Glucose Monitor, this is often referred to as CGM, it will summarize blood glucose data from your meter. However, you, your meter must be linked to your pump or you must enter your blood glucose readings manually in order to see data on this report. This report combines all data from the time period that you selected in one view. There are two important areas to pay attention to, the overnight period and the mealtime section. All right, so let's look at the overnight period first. It's important to look at this section of the report to see if your basal rates are appropriate. Having the right level set will help you stay more stable at night, and this will reduce the number of times you wake up high or low in the morning. You can see here that we've zoomed in on 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. time period. I recommend focusing on the darker shaded areas, as that is where um, there's a more consistent pattern. The black dotted line is typically the average glucose values. 
In this example, you can see that this person is dealing with some lows at night, as indicated by the areas shaded in pink and red. The darker shaded areas indicate that you're having frequent highs or lows should prompt you to talk to your healthcare provider for making basal adjustments at night. Next, we will move on to the meal summaries. You will need to be using the Bolus Wizard feature to generate data in this section, and the times can be customized for each meal. Let's review the example here. You will note that the start of the meal will be marked as zero and extend by however many hours you have set for the meal period. In the breakfast chart here, you can see the meal window is set for five hours. Pay attention to high and low patterns after meals. It's important to remember that a rise should occur. It's recommended that you rise 30 to 60 milligrams per deciliter post meal. If you were dropping within two hours after a meal, like the dinner example on the screen, then your carb ratio may need to be adjusted. If you notice this, please report this to your healthcare provider. The next report I wanna look at is the daily detail. This report is helpful for identifying patterns and helping you understand that you, this could be causing a high or low. This report is not something that you would look at every day as it would create a lot of pages in your report. However, if you wanna look at one particular day, use this report. The areas to look at for insight is the meal periods and the statistics session. First, let's look at the meal period. If you want to see how your body reacts to something specific, maybe you had pancakes for breakfast, and you want to use this report to get more insights on specific meals. In this example above, you can see all the data that can be gathered about one meal using this report. In black are the carbohydrates entered for this meal. Below the carbs, you can see the dose of insulin given. In this case, it was 7.9 units given for 30 grams of food. One more thing to pay attention to is the activity before the meal. The red line indicates the insulin was suspended before this meal. Overall, there are a lot of details on this report that you can help you look into specific meals. This report can give you more details than the logbook can that we will review shortly. As an educator, I will use this report to find specific um, boluses that maybe someone did in an hour. When we look at the logbook, it will only show the average and the total. With this, you can actually see if you did more than one bolus in an hour. So it will give you a lot more detail. In the daily detail, the next thing you can look at is the statistics section. In this section, you will see an average blood glucose, an average sensor glucose, as well as daily carbohydrates. You can also see the total dose of insulin. You'll note here, reports put the stats for the one day you've selected on the left side of the column, compared to the average over certain periods, allowing you to analyze the impact of certain activity or event may have on your glucose levels. One more thing to mention is that when looking at the total daily insulin, Many people aim for 50% basal and 50% bolus. That may not be the case for everyone. If you are noticing that, you can have a, a conversation with your healthcare provider. Plus, you can also use total daily insulin to help you estimate how much insulin you'll need from the pharmacy. The next report we wanna look at is the logbook report. As an educator, this is a report that I've used for many years. This report presents the meter glucose, the carbohydrate, and the insulin information by the hour and by day. It provides a diary of events as well as daily average and totals. 
First, let's look at the bolus information. The bolus information contains glucose value, and it will be on the top, shown here in yellow, and the carbohydrate grams in black, and the bolus amount delivered as shown on the bottom. The highlighted color of the BG will vary. Yellow will represent a high glucose that is outside the target. Red will represent a low glucose outside the target. And if there is no color, then that means the glucose is within target. When you look at the logbook as a whole, look for patterns at mealtimes. Are you noticing your glucose numbers are yellow at lunch? Or maybe they're red at dinner. This will help you find high and low trends. The last report I want to show you is the device setting snapshot. And this is a great tool and important to evaluate periodically. It's also important to have your settings downloaded in the event that you need to reprogram your POP or you receive a new device. As you can look on the device settings report on the left, you will see your current basal rates. If there are multiple patterns, the one labeled active is the one currently being used. On the right hand side, you will notice the bolus wizard settings. And in this section, you will find the carb ratio, the insulin sensitivity, the blood glucose target, and the active insulin time. Please note that if you're using a Minimed 530G pump, your settings page might look slightly different. Check for your settings in the middle of the report. This wraps up the reports that we're going to review today. Please review important safety information for your Minimed 630G system. I will leave this on for a few seconds. Here's some important information regarding suspend on low feature in the 630G. Here's some important information regarding 530G. And here's some important information regarding Paralink software.